Hi, this is Maki. I'm gonna be doing this um, really quick update to the video that I did recently. Um, exposing the Canadian courts, in this case, the divisional court. So I wanted to do this update. And also, I also wanted to use this opportunity to expose um, a lawyer, Jason Tam, um, in regards to his action. This is basically the purpose of this video, because when, when these lawyers and these people act outside of the way they're normally supposed to act, you really should expose what they're doing. So this is the purpose of this video as well. So I wanted to give an update since the last time I um, let the public know what was happening in, in, in the Canadian courts in regards to myself. So since the last time I made the video exposing the divisional court, um, and basically what it did was deny my appeal from the board, the ACRB, the Animal Review, Animal Care Review Board, in regards to an order that they made on August 4th against me, and um, that I took that appeal to the Divisional Court, which the Divisional Court is mandated to hear appeals and judicial reviews from boards and tribunals. But it, in, in this case, the judge, um, Justice Wendy Matheson, denied my appeal in the Divisional Court from the board, claimed that I did not have a right to appeal. And I went into the reasons I believe that she did that, um, which was to try to prevent me from really winning my case, okay, and to as the owner of those animals to be able to keep my animals and things. That was really the reason why they did that, okay? Because the Divisional Court hears appeals all the time from boards and tribunals. And so under the same statute that I was appealing my appeal from the ACRB, okay? So it really came as a surprise to me that the Divisional Court denied my appeal. Because I mentioned in my other videos, there have been other appeals that went from the Divisional Court to the Court of Appeal from the same board. So I wanted to expose what happened. Now, since that last video, there's been a number of things that's been happening. Okay, One of which is that I filed in the Superior Court of Justice now an application for declaratory relief on the the Constitution. Okay. So section 52 subsection 1 protects you under the Constitution from actions of boards or tribunals or courts or any proceedings or any laws. And of course, those laws will be established in a proceeding. Any laws that's inconsistent with Section 52 of the Constitution is of no force or effect. So I filed an application for a declaration in the Superior Court of Justice, which is the proper court to do that, not the Divisional Court. And the declaration was to declare invalid those very same statutes and or acts that the board is, has, has had relied on in regards to the constitutional question issues of my appeals. Basically, that the respondents, and in this case, the animal welfare inspectors had violated my rights under the constitution and under the charter by coming to my home on three separate occasions uh, without a warrant, without the authorization from the court within the space of two days to carry out an illegal search and seizure in my home. And so that violated my rights under Section 7 of the Charter, the right to the security of my person, and it also violated my rights under Section 8 of the Charter, the right against an illegal search and seizure. So what has happened in the meantime is that the Divisional Court judge now, Justice Wendy Matheson 
allowed me now to file a judicial review application in the divisional court and also a motion of, for a stay of the order that was made from the board. And she extended the time for filing that by two weeks. So when the respondent's lawyer, Jason Tam, heard of this, he contacted the court yesterday by email telling the court that I have an application for a declaration in the Superior Court of Justice, basically was trying to influence the divisional court from allowing me to do the motion for to stay the order and to do the application for judicial review, which I had a perfectly good right to do because the divisional court is going to hear the material facts of the case, which the Superior Court of Justice doesn't normally do with an application. Okay. So, and also the divisional court has no jurisdiction to hear an application for declaratory relief. Okay, that's what the superior court uh, jurisdiction lies. That's what it does, not the divisional court. But this lawyer was trying to influence the court and trying to stop my motion for a stay and trying to stop my judicial review application in the divisional court. And why I wanted to expose him today is because as a lawyer, you should know the proceeding of the court, okay? You want something from the court, you put it in a motion, okay? You put it in a motion when you want the court to do something or not to do something, okay? He didn't do that. He tried to go through the back door and try to influence the court by sending the email. So I contacted the court in response to his email and I, and I just, you know, this lawyer is trying to influence the, the decision that the court would make in regards to my motion for a stay and in regards to my application for a judicial review. Okay, that's why it does. And another lawyer prior to him involved with the same case, my case, Douglas Lee did the same thing, contacted the court to try to influence the court in regards to, to the decision that it would make in regards to my case. And so Jason Tam, did the same thing yesterday on behalf of his client. So I wanted to expose him in this video today. Okay. Uh, he wasn't happy that I now is able to file the judicial review application in the divisional court and the motion for the stay. So he tried to circumvent that by sending the email to the court and say, look, she already have this application for a declaration in the Superior Court. And he even sent a copy of the application to the Divisional Court, you know, via the email. Not like there was a hearing of a motion and he wants to, pre you know, pre present evidence and something. Just send it at, as an attachment to his email um, in regards to my application in the Superior Court of Justice for a declaration to render invalid the statutes and the acts, the PAWS Act and the SPPA that the board relies on in regards to my matters before the board. And I filed that application because it was inconsistent with section 52 of the constitution, the entire proceeding of the board was inconsistent because it never had the void eye hearing, which would was designed to hear my constitutional question application um, and to determine if the evidence from the inspectors and from the respondents would be allowed at the hearing of the appeal. This is kind of like putting the cart before the horse and saying, we're having the hearing without having the void eye hearing on the constitutional question, which is exactly what the board did. Okay, didn't have a hearing on the constitutional question. My application before the board went ahead with the hearing of the three appeals and make a decision in regards to that, um, which it shouldn't have done. Okay, it should have had the void eye hearing on the constitutional question. And then at that hearing, it would have been decided if the evidence from the inspector uh, would be allowed or could be allowed at the hearing of the appeals. And it shouldn't have been allowed, okay, if there was a hearing because of how the evidence was obtained. 
by the inspectors not having a warrant when they obtain that evidence in my home. Three times, not once, not twice, three times within the space of two days without a warrant, okay? Without the authorization from a court. So that's what happened. And the member was going into details in her decision about, um, you know, the inspectors saying how long it will take, it will take weeks to get a warrant, even a telewarrant they're claiming will take a long time. Really, you know, that shouldn't have, that shouldn't stand in a court in regards to the actions, okay? It really, it, it really has no grounds. So this is what I did in regards to the protection of my rights, because you need to know that the declaration has to do with the protection of my rights, okay? And under the constitution, under the charter and under the constitution. That's why I wanted to emphasize that me filing my application for a declaration in the Superior Court of Justice was perfectly fine, okay? It's two different courts, Divisional Court, Superior Court of Justice. Well, the Divisional Court is part of the Superior Court of Justice, but the jurisdiction of both courts are different. The the Divisional Court do not make um, declarations as far as your rights under the Constitution, okay? It mainly deals with appeals and judicial reviews. And its jurisdiction lies under the the Judicial Review Procedure Act. Okay. Whereas the Superior Court of Justice is far broader than the Divisional Court, far more authority than the Divisional Court. Okay. It does have the jurisdiction to make a declaration. It does have jurisdiction to provide declaratory relief. Okay, and so this lawyer now, letting the divisional court know that I filed the application in the Superior Court Justice for a declaration, and now I am filing a judicial review application with the divisional court. So I wanted to expose him in this video today.